cassette number four of four tapes on the message being led by the Holy Spirit, preached by Reverend Lauren Helm at Kokomo, Indiana, July 1978. We continue with Sister Jaya Prada's testimony during the third message preached on July 4th, 1978. In Indian history, this is the first school is starting where the poor children can have English. Oh, think of it. Only rich people, children, is, have a privilege of learning English from the age of three or four, not any poor people. Oh, poor people don't have But it. this is the this first, is the first time, time. Yes. First. because you were obedient, changed that brother who have a capacity to get all the permits for us, that yes. business brother. The Lord worked through us to touch him and encourage yes. him. only through you, I know, when he hugged you and he said, I know this man knows Jesus like my father. Oh. And he said, through your daddy's eye, I can feel that power of God and love. Precious Jesus, oh, how wonderful. That look really changed his life. Praise the Lord. It is the highest privilege of giving English to the little children because Christians, missionaries cannot go to India. True. And every state we have own language, we cannot go to another state to tell people about Jesus. That's right. So if you. we know English, we can go every state. Yes. So the children are going to learn English so they can go every state and be a missionary. Yes, that thrills yes. my soul, Daddy. Isn't that wonderful that the Lord took me over there to love him and oh, Jesus touched and loved him so and now good. he's going to teach him? Even if I want to start, I could not able to. Even if I have money, I cannot do it he because so it. many permits need to become. But yes. this brother knows many officials. See, he's a top man. Yes, he is, knows many officials yes. and they listen to him like a sheep. You know, yes. they just listen to him. And so God has worked through him. Because you coming there. And Jesus changed him. And the second thing you told me to go home, you know, when yes. the people of God yes. gave me the money to share to yes. the poor, I yes. want to send it. Yes. yes. And you said, that's necessary, daughter, you go. Yes. Right. Because I went, I can see the need of you this victim. See why of the now. You, oh. you sent word back in that little letter to me, you know, and you said, Daddy, what you told me in the States I found in India. That was so encouraging. He told me to tell you to go February the 18th. That's right. I'm glad I went. Praise and that the Lord. blessed me many ways. Oh, my. We're so indebted to Jesus. Aren't we indebted to him? Yes, so much. Oh, yeah. So thankful. Oh, if God leads you, pray for that school and God gave us a born-again teachers. Yes, oh, God. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thou art right here. I pray for the teachers. Christian teachers there, that you will now open the door and send Christian instructors. Let them be sent in. Let them come in. Let them be there. Take care and intervene. Undertake. Undertake for this school and for this brother uh, that has the ability to uh, be with the leaders of the country and that they will give him the special privilege of teaching the first Christian group that they could teach them English. Praise God. The poor people. Praise oh, Lord, God. grant him assistance now. Praise grant God. him helpers. Bring helpers in to him. Father, I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise Thank God. You, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, I believe I've talked long enough now. Praise the Lord. No, I guess I haven't. <laughs> We prayed that the Lord will strengthen me because my body gets awfully tired after almost four hours here tonight. Four hours and 20 minutes last night, six hours the night before. Here. Besides all the other hours. Yeah, that would. Praise the Lord in the hours in restaurants with people. Rooms. So it's necessary to learn the check of the Holy Spirit so that we will be in order. Because if we go when we want to go, then we're too soon. And then it's not accomplished. See, if we do something a little too soon, then we are defeating the very thing that God wants to do. When he tells me to wait, 
for so many months, then he sends me, then he finds one soul that hears. Or two, or half a dozen. But if I were to go, there wouldn't be anybody here. But when he sends me, there will be one that will hear me. There may be two. It's possible there may be three. Sometimes there's four that can hear what the Lord is saying. And this comes by the Holy Spirit in the entire life. As you walk with Jesus and trust Jesus, the Son of God, who is in heaven with the Father, soon to return back to the earth for the church. So as we walk in the light, as he is in the light, and we are led by the Holy Spirit, he teaches us about the check of the Spirit. I had the check of the Spirit one day, and it meant a lot to a minister, for he had been in great anguish and upheaval for three years. And because God checked me, I was there to be with him. Jesus could reveal to me where he was, and then he was delivered to that land. Now he's been a pastor of a church within three miles of our home for maybe seven to ten years. So he knows exactly how to lead you and to check you and me as we trust him. And so I pray about what God would have me to do at home. Some days I cannot do this. I have to wait till the next day. Some days he will allow me to make a call. Sometimes I have to wait minutes to hours to make that call. So he knows what his plan is for you, for me. So he wants to teach us the check of the Holy Spirit, how he operates. When the Holy Spirit began to work with me at, at a table, I would not eat. I would fast. And I would fast for the Holy Ghost revival to the world, to the Church of God Universal. He would work with me in 19 and 43, 44, 45, 46, up until 1955. I would sit down at the table, and this operation would come in my heart, then I would not eat. I would fast. That continued until uh, September of 1955, and he would, God sent me to a church. A young man would sing solos for me at my request. He had a gift, and when he would sing, I would be inspired. So I would request him to sing, he would sing. I took him to dinner one evening for the revival service, and we made our order for our salads and our steak and uh, potato. And everything was fine until they placed the salad in front of me. And when they placed the salad in front of me, the operation came within me, and for 12 years I had fasted for that operation because I thought the operation meant to not eat to fast for the Holy Ghost revival. Then while I sat there, now it took me 12 years to learn this lesson, while I sat there, Jesus brought it to my mind that if he was checking me about the meal, he would have checked me when I gave the order. It took me 12 years to learn it. Then I said, Jesus, for 12 years I have fasted every time you operated with me, and now here I am with a stranger. And I can see now that if you wanted me to fast, you would have checked me when I gave the order. You didn't check me to the salad was in front of me. So I said, Jesus, what are you telling me? It took me 12 years to learn this. He said, the man that made the salad I called to be my missionary in the Carolinas, but he hasn't heard me. It took me 12 years to learn that. I did without how many meals, you suppose, in 12 years to be taught. I don't know. God only has a record. So now, sometimes when I sit down, he tells me about the butcher that prepared the meat. Tells me about his life. Is that right, Kenneth? Is that right, Vera? Did that happen at your table? Yes, it did. Didn't know anything. Oh, yes, it did. Praise the Lord. 
It really did. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm thankful about that. Oh, it's, uh, it's so encouraging how Jesus is able to speak to me. I'm talking about the check of the Spirit, the revelation of God. Because you see, in all, it took me 12 years to learn that one lesson. It required 12 years to learn that one lesson. Like when we were getting ready for church one night, I said to my wife, I'm going over to Reverend Hills tonight. I usually always call the pastor and tell him if I couldn't get there. Sometimes I wasn't able to, but tried to make uh, a real uh, effort to do that. And uh, did that until you were taken away from us. And always would tell me you appreciated that which he did. But what I began to dress, I went to get my trousers on, and just as I started to put my foot and limb into the trousers, Jesus spoke to me. He says, I will heal the sick tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so when I got to Brother Hills, the Lord healed the sick that night. Had a marvelous time. At the door, a young woman found Jesus. Brother Hill was right there in letters to Jesus. We had a marvelous time. I took him home with me. I said, I have some melon at home, and I want you to come over and eat it with me. And when I took that cantaloupe to cut it, Jesus spoke to me and told me about the man that had to do with that cantaloupe, told me about his life, and I'll tell you, the glory fell on Brother Hill, and he said, I never dreamed that I could be so blessed over a cantaloupe. <laughs> he told me about the need of that man that had raised that cantaloupe, and Jesus told me right there, but it took me 12 years from 1942 and 3, clear through to 55, to be taught that Jesus can reveal to me about the people that raised the beef, raised the vegetable, raised the fruit, had to do with it, and he wants me to pray for them. Amen. Took me 12 years to learn it. So he wants to teach us how to wait upon him and to follow the guidance and the check of the Spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ. I see, I was going to quit a while ago because my body got so tired. But he said, no, don't quit. And so we went back and took right up where we ended back here. Did you notice that? Yes, see, we took quite a journey, didn't we? He wanted me to finish that. And I thought that I was too tired. I thought I was tired. But Jesus said, you go right ahead. You don't go by how you feel. You don't go by what you think. You go by what the Holy Spirit says. By God's grace, through the help and the strength of Jesus now, if you're able to take this and get it into your heart and not doubt, then you could begin to be taught of the Holy Spirit. But if you doubt the slightest, if you haven't been more interested in getting this, I mean put out great energy within you. So you, you and me have to put out great energy in the entire life, as much energy inside to learn these spiritual things as men on the gridiron are taught to make the touchdown, get through that line. They have to batter their way through it. They have to have enthusiasm. They have to have vigor and energy and power. And it takes that kind of interest inside. Now, if you put that inside of you, that with that strength, then you're going to get in on this. If you, if you give that kind of effort in your heart, then Jesus is not going to let you miss this. But this, you said, Brother, I wish I'd known it when you started. Well, I had told us this before. But we just can't just sit there and say, well, I'm glad to hear this. This is nice. But we've got to battle to get it because the powers of the air doesn't want us to get it. The principalities, the powers, the carnal nature, the flesh in us just wants to be slumbering and just enjoying it rather than to get through and die for it. To be taught. Because only by God's grace have I been taught. See, I have, I've been taught these things by the Holy Spirit, through Jesus alone, and by God's grace could I be taught from now on. Amen. Because, you see, I'm only a beginner. See, we're all beginners. We're all beginners, every one of us. See, I'm only a beginner, and so we're all beginners together. And some people think that we're in different classes, but we are. We're all together. We're at the feet of Jesus. See, there's just one class, and that's those that follow Jesus. They're all in one class. 
They're just, they're just all alike. They're blood washed. They're blood washed. They're all alike. And they're happy pilgrims. They love everybody in all the world. Hallelujah. See, they're all one class. Amen. In the class of great love, Amen. holiness, Amen. purity. Well, I must stop now. The following exhortation by Edgar Martin was shared July 3rd. However, because of its significance to all those who wish to be led of the Holy Spirit and desire to obey Him, we include it for our uplift and encouragement. So on my heart tonight in hearing this message, I've heard basically this message for years, but I believe by God's grace tonight it's gotten a little deeper in my heart, especially that only what is led by the Holy Spirit will last and mean anything True. in eternity. That's right. Holy. And uh, we watch Brother Helm as he shares these experiences and uh, preaches and uh, W that Satan will buffet us to say, well, he's just talking and well, why this happens with any preacher and why is it there are more people saved and all these things that Satan will keep telling us. Why is this ministry any different than any other ministry? Uh, there's other preachers that are doing, uh, the devil will say greater things. But precious ones, we're hearing uh, of a life of self-denial and obedience and he is illustrating by these stories and the results over years that only what the Holy Spirit leads in will count for anything. And we'll spin our wheels and work and work in our ministries and in the work of church life and come to judgment. And it'll all run through our fingers and mean nothing. Buildings and programs and a lot of people and a lot of excitement may not mean a thing. And Brother Helm has been sharing with us uh, that you can be in church for years, for 50 years, and never hear this message and never really walk with God and please God. You may even love God, but you'll never please God and we may be lost in eternity. So I trust that we'll hear with our hearts uh, that, that we must be led by the Holy Spirit in what we do. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And when the Lord ends at leading us, we had better wait and die out a little bit more. And so the last, last night and also tonight, these prerequisites of what it takes to be led by the Spirit, brokenness, loving everybody, not being critical, uh, walking with God, being saved, pressing into the sanctified life, uh, I fear that we've got a long ways to go, at least I do, to be so broken because we still tend to make our own plans while we're preaching that God is leading us. Uh, we still have our wants, and we're still making our plans, still holding out for this or for that. But may God break us where that we don't have any plans. <laughs> may the Lord break us where we'll just do His will. <laughs> and tonight this message just helped me, but I need your prayers that I'll be more broken. And we must pray for each other in this fellowship. Bear one another's burdens. and recognize our calling here. We're called to this ministry. Uh, we're not called just to go along in church activities. Amen. But God, the, Brother Helm's obedience has led us together here tonight. Uh, led us to the waitings upon God. And it's a part of him being in the little churches, being where God sends. And sometimes God doesn't send him. And people will say, well, why isn't he going to meetings all the time? Why does he have to stay home and pray? and so forth. And uh, the devil will tell you a lot of things. Uh, but it's more important for Brother Helm to be in the right place twice a year or any of us to be in the right place twice a year or to pray the right prayer twice a year than to be uh, exercising our energy the year round and doing things. God didn't call us to do things and to be somebody, but he called us to be nobodies and just obey God. <laughs> and uh, do it whatever people think about us and whatever right. people say. We're not called to fame and success. True. But we're called to die out. Right. And no one in this fellowship is going to be able to slip in quietly, but all they who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Yes. And it's going to cost you something to identify with this message. 
it's going to cost you a lot of reproof and, and a, a, a lot of suffering, a lot of persecution, but it'll seem nothing if you love the Lord, if you'll rejoice in everything, and everything give thanks and keep your eye on Jesus and just delight to serve him. It'll be a, just a wonderful thing. And uh, people will try to call you aside to other things, but it won't mean a thing to you. You won't look to the right or to the left, but you'll look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And you'll love the message when you've uh, pressed to, to walk in it. And may God help us to press to obey. And as we obey and as we die out and as we love everybody, uh, I, I tell you, we'll be in this 100%. Uh, since uh, we've been in these few meetings here the last few days, it's been a burden on my heart that so many of us that follow with Brother Helm are so sweet. They're all sweet. Everybody's precious by God's grace. But we need to, to get in this a little more. <laughs> We need to hear it with all of our heart. We, not, we, we must not let these precious men and Brother Helm bear the burden by themselves. And it, it's on my heart that we're not bearing the burden with them. Uh, we're, we're not in this. We just kind of think we are. Uh, God help us that we'll get in it. Uh, that we'll pray for Brother Helm every day. That we'll get this message and we'll obey it. And when you begin Amen. to obey Amen. it, it's different than just uh, listening to it uh, yes. with our ears. But God help us to die out and obey because Amen. we need revival in this country. Oh, and we oh. don't have time to wait. Oh, we don't. Uh, we, it must come quickly oh, or America will be lost. Yes. And uh, dear ones, it's so important that we hear this message and, oh. and obey the Holy Spirit. Oh, and only when we're obeying the Holy Spirit will, will America be saved. Only oh, when yeah. we're obeying the Holy Spirit will oh. our work for God mean anything. Right. It doesn't mean a stamp of the finger right. if we're in the flesh. Yes. Right. And the only way we can be in the Spirit and obey the Holy Spirit oh, yeah. is to die out, yeah. to love everybody, to become nothing, yeah. and to meet these prerequisites that have oh. been preached here. Oh. Uh, God help us to, pre to, to obey it. Oh, yeah. And only when we do will we begin to be led by the Spirit. Oh. I fear we're not really being led by the Spirit, but God wants it for everybody. Yes. Moses said, I would that all be prophets. That's what he said. And, and I trust that God will help all of us if God could get revealed. Bible Amen. for our day, Amen. people to obey the Holy Spirit, yes. uh, then we might have revival. Yes. But we're trying to get people in our hometowns and around us to obey God when we're not obeying God. God. At least I'm not like I should. Oh. God help me. I, uh, oh. Let's pray for each other yes. until we die out and love everybody and stop criticizing and yes. thinking about yes. people yes. And, yes. Yes. and talking about people and, and wondering oh. things about the fellowship, wondering about Brother Helm and the people that work with him and, and letting the devil buffet us about this or that. Brother, sister, we've got to get the victory yeah. over these things in revival for our day. Yeah. And then if we obey God, I tell you, it'll be wonderful. If, and, and I just don't know where there's a, a group of people like this anywhere in the country. And I, I don't want to be a respecter of persons. We're not anybody special. It's not for our say, it, sakes, but it's for God's sake and the kingdom's sake uh, that, that we're brought together here. We're not anybody special, but I don't know of any people that I'd rather be with or be around or that God is trying to work more beautifully with than this group. But we've got still a long ways to go. So may Jesus help us. And if all of us in revival for our day would get the witness of the Spirit, I tell you when Brother Helm says something, we all ought to say, I know it. Uh, <laughs> I hope we can get to the place where, where the whole group will be right with Brother Helm. I tell you, we'll be on the edge of our seats. Uh, we'll know some things in our heart. Now, uh, we don't want to press into wildfire or fanaticism, and the Lord will lead us all differently. Uh, you may not have a witness in the heart just a certain way, but you'll know it. Uh, it may be through knowledge or wisdom, but how, that doesn't matter. It's just that God will, will lead us. He will Amen. lead all of us. Amen. And we can all know what we, He wants us to know. Praise the and Lord. I, I'm trusting for the day, precious ones, that we can be at waitings upon God and revivals like this, and we'll all be in it. I believe if we'll all get in it, uh, the Holy Spirit could fall. Revival could come. What yeah. Brother Helms waited years and years for could come. He's trusting for it every meeting, every waiting, every trip to Israel. He's trusting for the Spirit to fall. But oh, yeah. the Spirit won't fall until we're all in one accord.
not just in the churches, but in Revival Fire Day, when we're all in one accord in this group, the Holy Spirit will fall. God help us to, to stay awake, to stay alert, to be on the edge of our seats and, and obey. And when something hits us hard and we, we realize that the Lord may call us to do something that will humiliate us, embarrass us, and, and uh, we, we won't get to do what we want to do, God help us that we'll just say, praise the Lord, glory to God, I'll do it anyway. <laughs> oh, and, and yes. God getting us to that place it'll be wonderful glory and God, God bring us to the revival we've waited for praise the glory Lord to God. Uh, death glory is Lord. sweet glory to God, praise God. Glory that's our daughter God. see the Holy Ghost got yes. not over this is it Amen. you're on the trail yes, yes. yeah yes. 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 death is sweet <laughs> it's a privilege to die out when it hurts us when the glory message hurts God. us I tell you that we're getting closer then glory and we God. ought to get to the place where we right. say glory to God when, when uh, uh, it's going to embarrass us glory humiliate us and we'll have to suffer a little. We're called, suffer. We're called to suffer. We're called to humiliation. We're called to dying out Thank and uh, living Thank without. But we Thank want this. Jesus. God Thank gives some people a fine God. house. And God gives others Thank fine you. clothes. And the devil will say, well, look at you. Brother, sister, we're not to look at each other. No. We're to look to Jesus. He calls us to poverty or to go where we want to go. Amen. Stay here Thank or go Jesus. there. It doesn't matter. We're Glory called to, to obedience. <laughs> and may God help us in this Fellowship Amen. Away without looking at each Glory other. Peter, James, and John Praise said, What about this fellow over here? Jesus oh. said, That's nothing to you. Yeah, Come and right. follow, me. follow me. Brother, <laughs> sister, we need to die out. That's it. We need oh, to look to, to Jesus yeah. and obey this message. Amen. I hope God will help us all to oh, be on the edge hallelujah. of our seats, to be present for it, it, and not worrying about what people think about us. Oh, we wonder, hallelujah. Well, does Brother Helm love me? Oh, and uh, does this fellowship, does, oh, does Brother Jesus. John? or somebody else really yeah. love me Praise are they going to ever call on me to testify oh, or pray Jesus. or preach brother oh, sister that God. doesn't matter anything right. God just wants us to look to him and love him Amen. Lord help us if we'll all die out to our wants and feelings and Amen. what people think about us Amen. and, and uh, just go all for God, oh, God. Uh, the Lord will help us here oh, yeah. the Lord help us to do it <laughs> why wouldn't we want to do it oh, why, is God. there any reason why we shouldn't do this oh I I tell you, there's no reason why we should. God, He's given us the best. Oh, here. Jesus is. Yeah. And so let's stop wasting our time. Lord, help us to do this. Lord, help us, dear ones. It's, dear one. way, it's the best thing in the world. Oh, they yeah. said to Naaman the leper, if you would have been asked to do some great thing, wouldn't oh. you have done it? Oh. And a little girl said, well, well, why wouldn't you just obey God? So yeah, he went down it. and dipped in the River Jordan seven times. Dear one, you're not called to do anything in these meetings or in this oh, fellowship yeah. that God won't give you strength to do. That's right. He's not calling you to do anything unreasonable. <laughs> he knows about you if you don't have money. He knows about you if you don't have good things. Just obey God. <laughs> Trust Him completely. And He'll see you through anything. Glory to God. He'll, He'll bring us through the furnace. Hey. He'll bring us to revival. Yes, sir. He'll pour out His yes, Spirit yes, upon us. Hear it, Lord. When we can get to the place where he wants us to be. Amen. This group Lord right here will bring us to the place oh, and the revival God. fire to fall. Praise Let's God. stop wasting time. Let's mean business for Amen. God oh, we need and to obey it. the Holy Spirit in everything. Oh, yeah. The Lord will help us to do it. I know he will. Oh, You're precious people. We're trusting you. Yes, God's yes. trusting you. Oh, in, with God. Christ, all things are possible. Yes. With man, it's impossible. Right. But with God, all things are possible. He, we can do all things through Christ, yes. which yes. strengthens us. Oh, yes. And uh, so let's just uh, uh, look to Jesus and press on. Amen. Jesus helping us. Praise the Lord. Please turn tape to the other side for an exhortation on witnessing by Reverend Helm. Thank you. I'm really thankful for the joy that, that Jesus gives. I know how unworthy I am, but I'd really like to thank Jesus for the privilege of, of Him sharing that joy with me. Praise the Lord, Stephen. Amen. Every time you new converts testify, every time you do, it will encourage you and strengthen you. And every time a new convert or any other person claims to be a Christian fails to witness for Jesus, every time if they fail to witness, they begin to lose out a little bit with God. Every time they witness, they get stronger. When they fail to witness, 
Now, there's one thing that you can always witness about and not grieve the Holy Spirit. Now, some people talk and tell what has happened and it's just a good thing, but it's not in order. But there's always one thing that's in order, and that is to say, praise the Lord Jesus for his precious blood that saves me, the Holy Spirit that cleanses me, and God that loves me. Praise God for victory and just sit down. Just praise the Lord for victory because of the blood, the word, the truth. And that will never, never be out of order. Always in order. To praise Jesus for salvation, for the blood, for the Holy Spirit, for the gifts of God, for his protection, for his provision, and sit down. And, uh, and the reason our churches are cold and lukewarm is that back when, if they were converted, they didn't continue to witness every opportunity. They let one go by. They, they started losing out with God. They either lost out then or they were losing out. They were losing out, God tells me. And uh, whenever people fail to witness for Jesus, they start losing out with God. It doesn't take long for them to be backslidden. Just a matter of a little while, and a person is backslidden. You can backslide very quickly. And not even be aware that you're backslidden because we fail to be a witness because Jesus said, ye shall be witnesses for me in Jerusalem in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Right. And so we can easily backslide if we fail to witness. So it's been a burden on my heart for new converts to be sure to witness every service possible. If it's only Jesus, save me and sit down. Mm -hmm. Because every time a new convert witnesses, he's going to be on the register of heaven and it registers in his heart and gives him the strength to climb the hill of difficulty today or tomorrow or the next week or this past or the few days hence. And if we fail to witness for Jesus, we start losing out with God. And many people in the church are backslidden and do not know it. They haven't any joy, they haven't any victory. It's just kind of a numb thing. Because they haven't witnessed faithfully from the time of their conversion, at every opportunity. See, a person in victory never misses one opportunity to praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If it's only for two words, Jesus saved and sit down. And so the Lord has revealed this to me through the years that unless people witness for Christ at every opportunity they have, if it's only praise the Lord, sit down, they grow spiritually. So we can easily backslide in any service where it's open, where you're privileged to witness for Jesus. You've taken my home church for uh, 45 years. If there's an opportunity for me to testify, unless the Holy Ghost speaks to me and says, don't say anything now. I'm, I'm almost, I have to hold on or I'll be the first one. And that's the way it is. Has been ever since I was converted. And I know at my home church, if there's if there's any witnessing, I know everybody says, well, there's one thing here, there's one that's going to be on their feet before long. <laughs> For 45 years. The old timers, it's been there. They know that if there's a service, unless God tells me now, you be quiet now. I'm going to, I have to work to keep quiet. And I know that the only way we can keep the victory is to witness faithfully every opportunity. Amen. Whether it's in the church, whether it's in the grocery store, wherever it is. Just like I was in a wedding one time, went to celebrate a 50th wedding anniversary. My father knew the people. I didn't know them. I didn't know a thing about them. But I went with Daddy. And here there were all these people. And so some fellow came in. And he said, what could be more wonderful than a man and a woman to live together for 50 years? Why? Do you think, that that, do you think I could keep quiet? <laughs> Well, he said, what could be more wonderful than a man living with a woman for 50 years? I said, I can tell you what's more wonderful. I had to. I was in that church. I was in that house. I said, what's one more wonderful is to know Jesus and walk with him for 50 years. Amen. Said, That's more wonderful. Boy, they all looked at me. Well, you see, that was time to speak. Now, if anyone is in a situation like that and you don't take advantage, look out what's happened. We can miss, we can be disobedient real quick and lose the victory and never be aware that we lost it. 
Never know it. See, many of our people in our church praise the people, but there's no power, there's no victory because they haven't faithfully obeyed the Lord Jesus Christ. They haven't obeyed Him. Just at only occasionally. And I pled with all the people who were saved 45 years ago to be sure and witness for Jesus. Put Christ first. Witness for Him at every opportunity. I know my father used to tell me 37 years ago, he said, son, you have a testimony meeting and it's dangerous because people get up and talk and they talk. And when they talk out of the spirit, I just start perspiring. But always in order to say, praise the Lord for saving me. Tell you, Jesus, help me. I've heard from heaven and sit down. And I'll tell you, the next time you have more to talk about, you have to pray for grace to keep quiet. Some of these testimonies today have been so precious. But we must encourage our new converts, Rodney and Stephen, be sure to review this, that unless we witness faithfully, we'll lose out with God, we'll lose the fire, we'll lose the joy, there won't be any power in our lives. You see, most of the church don't know this. They've been told, but they can't hear it. They don't hear it. Either they don't hear it or they haven't heard it. He tells me they haven't heard it. But everyone that walks with God that's been saved, they'll be right on their feet. Any opportunity when the meeting is open like it is here today. Because we'll lose out, we'll backslide. We'll lose the blessing. Did you know that you may be on your feet saying, Jesus, save me. And about the time you said that, it'll hit, it'll hit some old hard heart there. That Oh, it was so hard. Oh, it was so hard, hard, hard. And they were smitten by it. One little testimony, two or three words, smote a hard heart. Praise hard heart. If we could get everyone to obey the Holy Spirit and mind God from conversion, it'd be the revival fires burning every service. And in a grocery store, and in a drugstore, in a garage, God has sent revival to hearts. I walked into that garage and there was a fellow with me. And I went in to buy something from a car. I needed something. And I came through the door of that garage. I was going to buy something. I hadn't any more got through it until I started preaching under the glory of God. And here was a salesman right there with a big thick book. And he was trying to sell the proprietor something. And I looked over there and there was the proprietor's wife sm smoking a cigarette. And here was a young 15-year-old boy working with the pumps. And uh, here was a fellow painting the walls of the office. And I started under the anointing telling them about the kingdom of God. And it was just rolling out of me. It's just, just rolling, just with power and glory. I looked at the fellow back of me and he was crying, shining like a light. Oh, the glory of God and the old painter. He took his old hat off and he put it on his bosom. He held up his branch. And I looked at him. Praise God. And he said, something's going on around here. The cigarette went out. The swells and said, yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. And we had a meeting in a garage. Because God came on the scene. Oh, I didn't have any idea. I went in to buy something. And God sent me in a witness for Jesus. He wants us to be in season, out of season, the same. He wants us on the firing line. Amen. wants us to witness. Glory to God. I was praying, meditating about Ron and Stephen, that they would be strengthened and encouraged Amen. so that they wouldn't lose out like so many have lost out in the ages. Be encouraged to witness for Jesus at every opportunity whenever it's open like this. The thing that hurts the meeting is someone to get up and talk something good that they think about that's happened to them, but it's, it's good, but it's not in the spirit. It's not right for the moment. It may be right for two years or for two months or two days or three weeks. But just to praise the Lord and to tell about how Jesus is precious. Two or three words and sit down. Maybe half a dozen. And then we won't backslide. Church then can start seeing the lost saved. And have enough fire so when the lost get saved that the lambs will get plenty of milk. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We conclude this fourth cassette with musical selections from these services in Kokomo.
mountain there's fullness in Jesus all that you're longing for come and be glad I will pour waters on him who is thirsty I will pour floods upon the dry ground. Open your heart for the gift I am bringing. While you're seeking me, I will be found. Child of the world, are you tired of your bondage? Weary of a choice so false, so untrue. Thirsting for God and his fullness of blessing leads to the promise. So certain, so true, I will pour water on him who is thirsty. I will pour floods upon your dry ground. Open your heart for the gift. I am bringing while you're seeking me I will be found child of the kingdom be filled with the spirit nothing but fullness thy longing can meet. Tis the endowment for life and for service. Thine is the promise, Amen. so certain, so I will pour water on him who is thirsty. I will pour floods upon the dry ground. Open your heart for the gift I following is Ron and Talma Stoll from Muskegon, Michigan. I have one deep supreme desire that I may be like I fervently aspire that I may be like Jesus. I want my heart, his throne, to be so that a watching world may see. Brightness shining forth in me. I want to be like Jesus. Hallelujah. He's 
spent his life in doing good. I want to be like Jesus in lonely paths of service trod. I want to be like Jesus. He sympathized with hearts distressed. He spoke the words that cheered and blessed. He welcomed sinners to his breast. I want to be
Jesus is very near. so the Savior can see every heartache and When I come to the river at ending of day, when the last winds of sorrow have blown, there'll be somebody waiting to show me the way. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. Oftentimes I'm forsaken and weary and sad when it seems that my friends have all gone. There is one thought that cheers me and makes my heart glad. I won't have to cross Jordan alone. I darkness I see he'll be waiting for me I won't have to cross Jordan alone though the billow of sorrow and trouble may sweep. Christ the Savior will care for his own till the end of the journey. My soul
when the darkness I see, he'll be waiting for you and me. Oh, we won't have to cross your hand We submit these four cassettes to each of you who are listening in deep humility and yet with thanksgiving that God would share these significant and essential truths in the kingdom of God through his servant. We encourage each of you to review these tapes over and over for it will be only by God's grace we can get this message into our hearts. And as we have heard, or I trust we have heard, unless we do begin to wait upon God that he might bring us to a place of being led by his precious spirit, there is a great chance that we will not enter in to the kingdom of heaven. So we trust that each heart will be encouraged to press on daily in listening to these messages, reviewing them with one another, encouraging one another never to grow discouraged, but by faith believe that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could even ask or think according to that power which we allow to work within our hearts.